Welcome to the ScanCAD International presentation on re-engineering of legacy products in the electronics industry. ScanCAD is the leading producer of re-engineering products for the electronics industry in the world. A combination of PowerPoint slides and actual ScanCAD software will be utilized during this video presentation. The first part of this video will briefly discuss ScanCAD International, the company, and then we will discuss the challenges of legacy product re-engineering. Finally, we will describe the ScanFab, ScanPlace, and ConvertPlus re-engineering products available from ScanCAD International and how they can be implemented to re-engineer legacy products. ScanCAD International has been providing solutions to the electronics industry since it was founded in 1990. ScanCAD products have actually been around since 1987 when they were being offered by an Italian company that was later purchased by ScanCAD. Currently, ScanCAD has an install base of over 900 companies in 42 countries. Systems are sold both directly by ScanCAD and under a variety of private labels by several OEM partners. ScanCAD systems are all PC-based, low-cost, easy-to-use systems. These systems are also multi-purpose with many applications that can be run on a single system by simply adding additional software modules. ScanCAD systems are designed to simplify the complex technology that is present in the PCB fabrication and assembly environments. As most of you know, there are many challenges to legacy products. Manufacturing data may be missing or corrupt, or it may not be complete. The artwork may be old or damaged, if it is even available. And there may be no test data available as well. Many times the original supplier for the product has gone out of business or merged with other suppliers, and the product may be discontinued. Some products are being used well past their originally planned life cycles, thereby creating spare parts shortages. But a solution is needed for re-engineering of legacy products, since there is still a demand for these products, and profit to be made. You may ask why it makes sense to re-engineer a legacy product as opposed to creating a new design. Sometimes an exact replica is needed, including the same form, fit, and function. This can be due to the need to meet past certifications or the need to fit into an existing assembly, both mechanically and electrically. Re-engineering can be at a lower cost and a shorter time to market than a new design. There is no need to recertify or perform environmental or system testing. It may be necessary to improve on a previous design, but it can still be lower cost and faster to market to re-engineer an existing design and then modify it than to go through a whole new design process. Now you may ask, how is this re-engineering done? ScanFab, ScanPlace, and ConvertPlus, powerful scanning and re-engineering tools. ScanFab is the scanning system that can create all the necessary Gerber data and drill files necessary to remanufacture PCBs. ScanPlace and ConvertPlus are optional software packages should netlist and or component centroid and pin numbering information be needed. Some CAD packages need this information for a complete redesign or design modification. Now, let's discuss the ScanFab system in more detail. The ScanFab system can produce Gerber data and drill files from scanned images of PCBs, film, diesel, hand taped artwork, drawings, etc. The system is fully integrated, standalone system containing a high resolution color scanner. The scanner is calibrated with the NIST certified glass plate to ensure accuracy of the scan data. Use the ScanFab system to re engineer boards, including multi layer boards. ScanFab systems have been successfully used to re-engineer boards of up to 24 layers. There is virtually no practical limit to the number of layers that can be re-engineered since the software supports 99 working layers. Essentially, the ScanFab system captures images and creates corresponding vector data such as the Gerber TEP 274X output shown. Some additional benefits of ScanFab are to supply production with the required Gerber data when none exists. The quality of the data can actually be improved by using internal check and QA features. Film 
human drawings can deteriorate over time, so scan and store in digital format instead. Storing digital data is much less costly than storage of films or drawings in temperature and humidity control facilities. Digital data allows for storage of multiple copies of designs to prevent loss from theft, fire, etc. Also, digital data is much easier to send to other sites for production transfer or overflow production. ScanFab creates either standard Gerber 274D or Gerber 274X files for all required layers of a PCB. It can also create either Exelon or Siebenmeyer format drill files. Another benefit is to use ScanFab to create process documentation in a variety of bitmap or vector formats, such as DXF or AutoCAD. The Windows-based ScanFab software is intuitive and very easy to use, having evolved with 20 years of customer-driven enhancements. There are many built-in quality control functions to ensure quality output data. The software includes powerful vectorization functions to automatically create Gerber data and also an enhanced Gerber editor to modify the data if necessary. Context-sensitive help functions are readily available if assistance is needed. In addition, comprehensive training documentation with embedded videos is supplied with the system. In summary, ScanFab is the most successful PCB reverse engineering system in the world today. Now, let's see ScanFab in action. Okay, so we'll move from this PowerPoint presentation and move into the ScanFab software itself. Now, for the purposes of this video, uh, we'll only be able to give a small taste of the power of ScanFab. So we'll just quickly step through some of the functions just to see how the overall process works. As I look at the ScanFab software, as you look at it here, you'll notice at the top we have the ability to import Gerber files as well as the ability to edit Gerber images and raster images, etc. Obviously the scanner-based system has a scanning submenu, and here you can see the scanner calibration area that was mentioned earlier with the NIST certified glass grid. The system even has the ability to check the glass grid to make sure it's okay. Under the process submenu in the ScanFab software, we do have solder mask capabilities, step and repeat paneling, rubber film capability when you need to stretch or reduce uh, film sizes in X and Y, ability to copy uh, uh, Gerber data from one layer to another, drill fry Drill file generation for Gerber, for um, sorry, Exelon and Siebenmeyer formats. When you obtain the scan place optional software, this does permit you to import uh, CAD data, bill of material data, and other assembly oriented type data formats. Here in the vector output area, we see the DXF output for AutoCAD, and as mentioned a minute ago, these bitmap outputs. Finally, on this uh, front menu, we have the ability to, to edit and work with various uh, aperture tables. So now, uh, not, by the way, not only does the software work with pop-down menus, but there are icons along the side, and there are micro helps, for example, scan an image here. So the software can use pop-down menus as well as icons. We'll step now into an image. In fact, uh, let me step into a different layer of this image here. We'll go to layer one. Uh, what you're looking at here is a blue image. Uh, this is actually a scan image of a film from the system. If I zoom in a bit, let's page up a little bit, maybe move a little bit to the left over here, uh, we can see that we have essentially a bitmap on the screen. If I get in very, very close, you can see the actual pixels of the bitmap. So this is a scan image of a film on the ScanFab system. And the first step when scanning a set of films is to not only scan the first layer, but to go ahead and scan the other layers as well. So here we have layer two, which we can see is a circuit layer. I can now look at layer three, etc., etc. So in this case, we're overlaying layer one and layer three of a particular job. So in the normal flow of ScanFab, you would scan in all of the layers of the film before any Gerber data is generated. This information, again, is in a bitmap format. So the power of ScanFab is now to convert this image into vector format. And so along the top of the screen, again, stepping through these pop-down menus, we see that 
the first menu of, of significance for the scanfab product has a variety of vectorization functions for creating pads, for creating tracks, as well as the ground and power plane areas. For this particular film, we'll go ahead and run a function called ALPR++. This actually creates the aperture table and creates the Gerber data for this pad master. The new data is pink in color, as you can see, and it actually has been uh, placed on a, an alternate layer so you can verify it's okay before you merge it in the layer that you actually want to work with. So I now have actual Gerber data on the screen. Uh, in fact, if I zoom in a bit and I can turn off the Gerber data, we see behind it the blue raster image. If I turn that on, I have this green Gerber data. Again, when the two are on top of each other, we can see we have a perfect match. So the system automatically created the aperture table, which I will go over here and take a look at right now. So this is the aperture table that was created for this job, and these are the numbers of apertures and the different shapes. Okay. Now, I will take a second now and clean up in this text area, and we'll do text here in a, as an example here in a couple of minutes. The normal flow for the system is you create your pad master first. You scan this, for example, on layer one. We'll save the work we've done. We now copy this information from layer one to layer two, in this case, a circuit layer. So now if I move into layer two, which as you saw a minute ago was a track layer, a circuit layer, we now have the pads created on layer one have been copied now on top of the tracks that are here on layer two. So using a vectorization function for tracks, we now step through this function and I won't step through all the detail on the different things here, for example, removing text and whatnot. These are all, uh, there's too much detail to cover in such a short video that we're doing right now. But I do want to just share with you the power of it now vectorizing and creating all of the tracks for this particular job here. Just as we did before, we'll go ahead and move this data into this current layer, and I'll zoom in close so you can see this. Again, we have the green Gerber data on top of the blue raster data, which forms this turquoise color. In this example, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to change the tracks to a red color. So as you can see that the tracks do not terminate at the center of the pads yet. The software has the capability to go ahead and perform this function. And you can see now that we have a great electrical connection between the track coming in to the center of the flash pad. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and turn these tracks back to a normal color. Okay, so now you can see this is how we've worked with this function. By the way, while I'm in this mode, let me just point out the power of the system uh, as far as the help functions. If I bring up the help function here, context sensitive, so you can see at any time you can kick out to a help function which talks about any of these functions in the software. And as was mentioned a minute ago, there are embedded videos as well in the documentation to help with any of these, these functions. I'm going to go ahead and save this work. We'll now move into the third layer of this particular job where we have copied in the pad information. And just as we did a second ago, we can run the track vectorization. As it did a second ago, we now have the tracks for this layer We'll go ahead and now move these into this layer. We like the quality of the tracks that were done. And as we did a second ago, we'll go ahead and connect those tracks to the pads, making sure that we have good electrical connections. Okay, you'll notice that we have some plane areas here. And what I'd like to do is go ahead and I'll draw a window around this area just to show you how this particular function works. So I'll vectorize, we have something called contour and fill. You can select what size aperture to fill with. In this case, I'm going to use a 4 mil circle. And when I run this function, just like the pad function a minute ago and the track function, this function creates all the data on a different layer, permitting you to verify that you like the quality of the data that was generated prior to merging it with the data. Again, we're using a 4 mil fill. And so now we can zoom in a bit 
and take a look at the, at the work that it did and verify that we like the quality of the data that was in there. Once we like the quality, we can go ahead now and merge this data right in, and then we have Gerber data. Okay, at this point, we will kick out of this layer and step into yet another layer on this job. We'll step up to the silkscreen layer so we can take a look at, at how track recognition is done. There are actually three different ways to do track recognition in the software. So it's a function of the quality of the output that is desired. One of the functions is located here with an icon. You can read it on the screen. Uh, you can either click on this icon and simply uh, type in, for example, SAM. And by the way, let me get the right aperture size for this guy right here. We'll use an 8 mil aperture. Let me escape this. And we have an 8 mil aperture. And we'll just type in text of SAM capitals. Okay, sample. Okay, so for example, you can see if I drop this on this job right here, zoom in a bit, we have a very high quality Gerber image. In fact, I'll turn off the raster image right now. I'll get rid of this here. And we'll just show the, the vertices on this. So you can see we have high quality Gerber data. So you can see the very individual vertices of these tracks on this, on this Gerber data. This is the highest quality data that is available. I'll just go ahead and delete this, this information right now. And we'll then show you a second way to do text information is to simply fill with something called short vector fill. So these are small little vectors. I'm leaving vertex show on now so you can see the little pink vertices right here. And if I were to get very close on this job, high zoom, you can see that now we have thousands of little vectors that are filling in the data versus the individual uh, vectors you saw a minute ago in the highest quality output. Okay, again I'll delete the data that, that's here and we'll do yet a third method and this is a using the contour and fill function that you saw a minute ago and now we will run this function and you can see the quality of the data here. Again, let me go ahead and move this in to this layer and you can see that we have something that's sort of in between the super high quality text and the lowest quality short vector fill text. So in this case, uh, if I wanted to do the entire silk screen, you simply draw a window around the area that you would like to vectorize, and we'll go ahead and, and let the system uh, convert all of this text into Gerber data. So here we have reference designators and various things off of the film that are ready to go. So as you've seen so far, we've done the pads, we've done tracks, ground power planes, and now text. What I'll do is I'll step out of this uh, for this video now and we will go ahead and generate the Gerber data for this particular job. And we'll just call it reverse engineering sample. It now creates the data and if we were to step out <clears throat> into the software here, we can see the various Gerber X files for this. We'll just go ahead and open up layer one here so we can see the Gerber X format for these flash pads on that layer one, the pad master. If I step down through this text file, you can see that we have the embedded aperture table, different apertures, sizes, and of course the Gerber data. So that, in a nutshell, is a very quick look at how ScanFab product looks at and creates Gerber data from a scan image of a film. What I'd like to do right now is just take a second and let's take a look at a color board just so you can see how the system can be used not only with something like a film but also a board. You're looking at a color image of a board. The system has the capability to extract information off the board and just like before it can then make the Gerber data. So again the green Gerber data on here. Okay. The same the system and the same techniques are used to make the drill data as well and extract the drill data. Again, I'll, I'll quit out of here, take a look at other types of things that would be available. Uh, probably of ScanFab, the only other thing that might be of interest is simply the speed and power with which it works. The sample we've been working with so far, as you've seen, is a very simple uh, film 
or a simple sample training board. Uh, this is a much more complex board, and we'll go, go ahead and run a um, vectorization now on this sample. So this has approximately 2,500 uh, pads of different sizes and shapes, 2,648 exactly. And it, it now has run this function. And if I page up, we can look at the different, uh, different things we see here. Uh, I'll zoom in over in this area. So move over to the right. By the way, the system for moving around, you can use scroll bars, you know, obviously. Um, you can use page up and page down on your keyboard. Uh, just infinite ways to move around the product. All right, I've attempted to give you a, a quick introduction to the ScanFab product. Again, across the top, we have the different vectorization, different types of techniques. Uh, just a few things of, to note. We won't actually run these functions, but there's a variety of grid functions that help uh, snap things to grid and can improve the quality, especially for a film that may have shrunk over time. Um, there's obviously a measurement capability, a lot of, of, uh, of shape functions that are used with macros and whatnot. Um, within window environments, you are able to copy, move, delete, fill, replace. You can grid things in a window, uh, moving things around, flipping, rotating. A whole mess of check functions that permit you to verify the work that you've done is quality. So we can do layer to layer checks, over placement checks, this type of a thing. So many, many different things that can be done. Um, there are clearance checks that can be done, verification at Gerber to Gerber or raster to Gerber. Vertex function we used a second ago a little bit. If we hit the scan place product, we would turn this environment on, and we have the whole the ability to extract um, centroids and all types of other kinds of things. And finally, there are inspection capabilities in the product and the scan fab product that permit you to verify that the Gerber data is overlaying the raster image so that you don't have any kind of mistake when you're working with this product. Okay, that is your introduction to this product. We will now step back to the PowerPoint presentation and move forward that way. In place is an optional software module that can be easily added to ScanFab if component centroid and pin numbering data is needed in addition to the Gerber data and drill files created by ScanFab. Also, ScanPlace can be used as a standalone product in the PCB assembly environment. ScanPlace can generate programs offline for automated assembly systems by scanning bare boards or artwork, as well as from Gerber or ASCII CAD data. For the re-engineering application, it is generally used to generate component centroid, rotation, reference designator, package ID, part number, and pin numbering data for CAD systems. This data can be used along with the Gerber data and drill file data from ScanFab to help recreate the original design. Use ScanPlace to extract and overlay necessary reverse engineering data for verification of correctness. This is an example of the component data that can be generated from the scanned image of an actual component. Over 70 different output formats are supported by the ScanPlace software module. Convert Plus is an additional software module that is also available to add even more capability to the ScanFab and Place re-engineering system. Convert Plus can import the Gerber and drill data from the ScanFab systems or even other CAD formats such as DXF files and extract and output netlist files for use in a flying probe tester or to input into a CAD system. A flying probe tester is sometimes used to verify the correctness of the Gerber data created with the ScanFab system. ScanCAD also offers a family of low-cost flying probe testers for this purpose. ScanCAD systems are proven with over 900 systems installed in 42 countries. Reliable, economical, and easy to use. Calibrated to ensure accuracy. Flexible and multi-purpose. Add additional software modules for additional capability. Powerful. The high-resolution scanner allows for scanning lines and spaces as small as 2 mils. Upgradable. 
ANCAD protects customer investments by always supplying an upgrade path and environmental friendly by extending the life of legacy products. Please contact ScanCAD directly or talk to your local sales representative for more information on ScanCAD products. Several other products not mentioned in this video are also available from ScanCAD. Some of these products are process control or setup tools for the PCB assembly and hybrid microcircuit industries, bareboard flying probe testers, inline conveyorized or offline desktop automated inspection systems for functions such as solder paste inspection, adhesive inspection, ball placement inspection, hybrid print inspection, wire bond inspection, or skip mark detection. Inspection systems for other products outside of the electronics industry such as fuel cells, photovoltaics, photochemical machining, and others. Software tools for minimizing EMI during the design phase of PCBs. Please see our website for more detail. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for your time and attention.